interesting. I'd call this a grudge match, except that they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who are you giving this one to, Monty? I, I'm going to go with Christian Calcano. I think it's extremely tight. Simon Nielsen, an incredible player, and it could definitely go either way. But I just really want to see the calculator get it done, Maria. What about you, Will? I'm going to go with emotion. I feel like I know both these players. I know what it means to both of them. I don't really want to pick between them. It's, it's flip a coin. Who's going to win? Yeah, absolutely. They're both absolutely fantastic people, and I cannot wait to see this matchup. I'm going to throw it over to the booth, everybody, for semifinal number one with Cedric and Paul. Thank you so much, Maria and Monty, and of course, Will, Cedric Phillips, Paul Chion. We are here in the booth getting ready to bring you our first semifinals matchup, Paul. Now, I will say this, everybody. Don't even think about leaving because this might not take very long. It's a Tron Mirror partner. Those, uh, they generally go pretty quick. Yeah, absolutely. The way that this matchup plays out, I mean, there's a few key cards, but of course, it's all about just hitting Tron. Yeah. Not that many ways for the decks to interact with each other. Starting hand size for both players probably not going to be particularly large no. because this deck does mulligan quite a bit to find those Tron pieces and then some sort of payoff will follow up soon thereafter. Left side, you see Simon Nielsen, who's having a fantastic stretch of events this year year coming off of a top eight at Pro Tour March of the Machine and a top eight here. He is a ball of excitement and absolutely loves his deck as does Christian Calcano. These two have already played once here this weekend and they will do battle once again. Handshake Tron on one side and what I am now going to be deeming Calculator Tron on the other. Uh, yeah. All right. How's that sound? You know, if it sticks, it sticks. Hey, Let's you're, go with that. All right. You're in. That uh, was an easy sell. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> This Handshake Tron deck is very unique in so far as Team Handshake, they did a lot of work on this strategy coming in say, saying that there are no Sacred Cows in this deck. We are going to build this deck from the ground up and we're going to see what we can find and what we can change. Did you see the opening hands here oh, for both ho, players? Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Calcano? That, that, that's a turn three card. We're just, you know, rewinding the clock just a little bit here, going down to five, but this is Natural Tron into turn three, Karn Liberated. It sure is. This is back circa 2013, it feels like, when that was the reason to be playing the Urza Tron in right. modern. Now, to Simon Nielsen's credit, does have a Forest and a Basaju who endures for the next turn. As you see, Warm Coil Engine was drawn there from a Calcano. And then you also notice that for Nielsen, has an Urza's mine, so is two thirds of the way to putting the Tron together. Yeah, so for Simon, you're gonna see him go ahead and fire off that Basaju next turn. But because Kalkano has natural Tron, he'll be able to fight through that Basaju at least once. At least once. Dismember the draw here this turn for Simon Nielsen. A good card against an open metagame, but a poor card in this matchup. It's basically not a card in yeah. this matchup. It has no targets. There's a worm coil engine that you can shrink it down to one, 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 one. That's all it does. Simon Nielsen will just play a Tron land and oh. pass the turn back. So he didn't play the Forest. He's actually probably going to channel that Basaju through. Oh, that's like green mana? Yeah. That's we through a Chromatic Sphere. It, and interesting here, Calcano choosing to fetch that tower so he doesn't actually have insurance here hmm. for Tron. Had he chosen not to search, he, he could have used that map to find the missing piece. Now, of course, Simon Nielsen's list only has one Boseju in the main. Yeah. So it might not necessarily even be correct to play around that. And that was a somewhat crafty play there by Simon by playing a Tron land as opposed to the forest on that particular turn. Threatening Tron, of course, now right. because of the tower and the power plant, excuse me, the mine that is on the battlefield, but also being able to sift through that chromatic sphere in order to make green mana to besage you, Calcano. Yeah, but the interesting thing, at least if you're on Calcano's side, is Simon passed with two mana, had a sphere in play. Mm -hmm. What are the types of things, what's the worst possible thing he can do? Sure. It's the besage you, right? Besaju. You have that turn three Karn, perhaps it, it might have been better to consider just holding onto that map just in case. Yeah. So, this will be an Oblivion Stone here from Calcano and passing the turn back. Missing in Urza's power plant is Christian to complete the Urza Tron. Same can be said here for Simon Nielsen, who will kick things off with a Chromatic Sphere. He'll cycle that, so a green mana is floating here for Simon. Simon picks up another copy of Urza's Tower. 
It's all the towers, I think. He's run all the towers in his deck. Yeah, that's not much of a problem. Regan Progenitus, not a particularly powerful card in this matchup either, but it does cycle. Christian, on Christian's side, has a little more action, right? Has the card in hand. Absolutely just needs to go ahead and find the missing piece here. Could draw it off the top. Could find it off a potential Ancient Stirrings next turn. Mm -hmm. And if Christian is able to find that Urza's power plant on his turn, the game gets significantly easier with Karn Liberated, one of the absolute best cards in the mirror as we are going to head back the calculator's way. One huge draw step here in game number one right now. It is a gemstone caverns. All right, so not a whole lot to work with here now if you're Christian Calcano. It's just going to be land go. And we'll deploy another tower. And this is going to be Adrian oh, Gatha <laughs> to the hand. Sure. <laughs> one, of the few players, this, one of the few players playing a... Uh, a companion this week. We found a target for Dismember. Uh, oh, hey, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. That's accurate. We're going to head back over to Simon. Simon is drawing a copy of Horping Whale. Towers and mines. Everything is fine. These players looking for the elusive power plant. It's a little strange, though, watching just both these players just trying to play a fair game of Magic, right? <laughs> no Tron on either side. There's a whole bunch of other lands. Yep. No, no card in the Great Creators, no One Rings, no nothing yeah. for either player. The nice thing here si if, uh, for Simon is if somehow Christian finds uh, the missing Tron piece and runs out of Karn, if you play the mind this turn, you have a little bit of protection built in you do. for a Karn. You do. But then you're still facing against the Karn and you have nothing in hand. Yes. It's... It does give you a little bit of protection, as you mentioned, by having double Tron pieces out. So, the Sage, you can't break it up. Right. Karn, with its minus three, can't really break it up, as now Kalkano's going to do a little bit of thinking. Six. I have six, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's head over to oh. Christian. Who will find the power plant first? Oh. That is a fantastic card. One of the best cards, if not the single best card, in the mirror here. We've seen in these Tron mirrors, players simply just concede when the opponent gets a Karn, the great creator, in play. Now, it's no power plant, but it's quite the consolation prize. You're going to see that Karn get an expedition map and put that right on the battlefield. Now, the yeah. map that... Calcano did grab. It was exiled via Relic of Progenitus, and of course Karn has the ability to grab a card from outside the game, not just from the sideboard, but for, but for cards that have been exiled as yeah. well. That, that was not a sideboard expedition map. No, I don't think they not. went that deep. No. Warping Whale is going to make a scion on the end step. Ooh. This will allow Nielsen to pressure the Karn at least a little bit. Yeah, but Simon has now found a Karn of his own. Okay, now things will start okay. to get really interesting. If you run out the Karn, all of a sudden Christian cannot sacrifice that expedition map that he has in play. Can't get the missing piece. So, that Scion, well, it's going to be was, attacking that Karn. It was thinking first. about it, yeah. and it will be. So, Kalkano's Karn the Great Creator will be at two, while Simon <laughs> Nielsen's will begin things at five. Right. Immediately going to take it down to three to also grab a card from outside of the game. It'll be Pithing Needle. Okay. Okay. Oh, so everything has now been All locked right. up. All right. So no cards. Can't use your O-Stone. We do see this sometimes <laughs> in Karn the Great Creator Mirrors, which is I'm going to search for a Pithing Needle and Karn basically your Karn, but also mine. So right. Karn the Great Creators are shut off for the moment. There are ways, of course, to break out of this. You can see someone Four, yeah. use Karn Liberated and minus the Pithy Needle right, turn back right, on right. Besaju, something of that sort. Now, Christian did find Sylvan Scrying here. So you can go Sylvan Scrying, get the missing piece, run out Karn Liberated. Yes. The Pithy Needle doesn't stop both of the Karns from being activated. No, it does not. 
So a very timely draw step there for Calcano. Now, going to think things through here a little bit. Again, can't use the map straight away because of the Karn, the great creator, on the other side of the battlefield. But there is that Sylvan scrying. The other consideration is something like a Basaju, but Karn kind of already acts as a Basaju, right? You just jam the Karn, and all of a sudden you have the ability to exile what's in play. Yeah, you, you have to... This is, a, this is actually a really tough turn, because the straightforward part of this is I can just Sylvan Scrying for Ursus Power Plant, play Karn Liberated, right? right? That part's really, really, really easy. Now, if that's the avenue that Calcano decides to go down, what is he going to minus on the Karn Liberated, right? He can't break up the Tron, and if you just go piece by piece here, are you going to remove the Forest? Probably not. Any yeah. of the Tron pieces? I mean, you could just tick it up. You could, you could right? tick it up. You could just start ticking it up. If you, if you want to minus on the Pithing Needle, that means that your opponent right. gets to use their Karn again. I think if you want to do that, you wait until the next turn I where you have access to all that mana. I would agree. Right. So with that in mind, is there a reason instead to cast perhaps Warm Coil Engine this turn? Yeah, I mean, that could be a consideration. My, my question is, if you just run out the Karn and you take up... I guess the worst case scenario is if Simon finds Tron and then plays the Tron land and plays something like an Ulamog. Sure. Right? Sure. But I guess playing Wormcoil Engine doesn't stop that either. Yeah. And that's, that's why I think this turn is a, a very interesting one. I don't think it's particularly simplistic. I think the easiest part of the turn is scrying for the power plant. Sure. Past that, I think there's quite a few decision trees on what Calc wants to do here. So here's something that you could try to do. You could kill the needle, activate your Oblivion Stone, turn it into a 3-3, three, three, and then kill your opposing Karn. Let's see. I don't mind that. That's now, a, that's a Simon, way to go. Simon is tapped out. Well, no. He's not tapped out. There's a Scion in play. That's correct. You can, stack, you can sack the Scion and cast Dismember. Oh, we said, wait, hang on, hang on. We, we said Dismember doesn't do anything. Well, we agreed earlier, I, Paul. I, I wasn't anticipating Paul. a 3-3 three, three Oblivion Stone being animated to kill an <laughs> opposing card. That was not in the list of likely outcomes. That's on page into this. 204. Oh, okay. Well, did, who, well, I read Dom Harvey's guide gotcha. that was on the only, Amulet. That's the only one you had time I need, for. I need somebody to write a Tron guide. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So it looks like Karn Liberator, which of course starts with six loyalties going down to three. And th this line that you mentioned, this line of exile the Pithing Needle, activate your Karn, try to kill your Karn with Oblivion Stone, I mean, that's attractive. Yeah. But it does get really messed up by Dismember. So right. instead, we're going to see Karn Liberated exile Karn the Grey Creator and simply pass the turn back. All right. The draw step here for Nielsen is, well, that's Ulamog. But okay, there, so there that's piece no, one. Yeah, that is, that is step one to step a complicated one. puzzle. Exactly. Step one now needs to find a way, not expedition map, but needs to find a way to search for the missing Tron piece so you can cast your Ulamog and swing this game around. And this is one of those spots here where I'm not saying this decision was incorrect, obviously. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves, but they only have three scryings. Yeah. As opposed to four. Yeah, and I will say, you know, in this particular matchup, that yeah, matters. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the Handshake folks built a, I want to say, more well-balanced deck I totally, for the entire field. Totally. Right? We saw cards like Urza Saga just single-handedly win games for Simon Nielsen. Yeah. Not especially great in this matchup, right? Because you're really just trying to go over the top yep. a lot of, in a lot of the games. But um, I think for this specific matchup, you're talking about Kalkano, who has an additional copy of Baseju, an extra copy of Karn Liberated. They're small advantages, but they do count. They matter. Absolutely do. So there's another tower. The freshly drawn Ulamog, an Oblivion Stone that is not impactful right now because of the Karn, the Great Creator that's on the other side of the battlefield, a Dismember, which is generally useless in this matchup right. except for corner cases and another Urza's Tower in hand here for Simon Nielsen. So the only real decision at this stage of things is where is that Scion going? Right. I imagine it's liberated, right? Because currently the Karn the Great Creator is turned off, and if you attack Karn liberated, then Christian can't minus the Karn to get the Pithing Needle off the battlefield. Yeah. 
stand a reason. And that's exactly where that Scion is going to go. So Karn Liberator will fall down to two loyalty. And we'll head back Calcano's way. So he'll give a little bit of a shrug here, Will Christian, before untapping those five lands. And we'll make it six here in just a moment as he's going to sacrifice an expedition map. Remember, he can do that now because Karn the Great Creator is not on the other side right. of the battlefield. And he's going to go All get right. a Besage. Besage you. Could use the Besager now to still remove that Pithing Needle. Mm -hmm. Minus the Karn, or plus it if you, want it, if you want it to still stick around, right? Yep. There are some real options here for Christian yeah. on this coming turn, and that is even before he draws a card, which right. would certainly change the calculus as well. See what you did there. No, you didn't. Yeah. I, th I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> Christian will draw. <laughs> it's the one ring. Okay. So, no shortage of action here for Christian Calcano. Lots of mana. I think this is the easiest place to start, which is plusing the Karn Liberated. Of course, can't minus it given its loyalty at the beginning of the turn. So, Get this information first, and now there goes the dismember. And Cal can uh, lead things off with the one ring here, or just choose to just play all the creatures. Calcano starting the turn before a land drop with access to 12 mana. Besejo could make it 13, okay. but that is pretty unlikely that he's going to play that as a land. Right. It looks like he's already setting up for a target here. Perhaps looking at the Pithy Needle, the redundant copies of the Tron Lands means Poseidon on a Tron Land isn't that great here. Mm -hmm. So there is the Poseidon on the Needle. So Karn the Great Creator is back to being active. Nielsen will search up a basic forest and place it on the battlefield here in just a moment. So even without Tron, that means Nielsen could potentially go up to eight lands next turn. So Christian needs to think about the possibilities for Simon if that were to happen. Mm -hmm. Remember, can't search for something like an Ulamog here with Karn, the Great Creator. Cityscape Leveler does not kill lands. Curious to see what Christian's going to go for here with Karn, the Great Creator. Yeah, he's going to search for... Stone Brain? He's going to search for a card outside of the old... Uh, outside of the game here. And there, you, you do see the options there on the left side of our screen. Cityscape Leveler among them, but it is going to be Stone Brain. Yeah, now you can just name Urza's Power Plant to guarantee... to ensure that Simon will never draw Tron. Or perhaps something like an Ulamog, because Simon is just getting close to hard casting it. Yeah, Simon right now has access to seven lands plus a Scion, a Scion token, excuse me, that can be sacrificed for a mana. Calcano just trying to figure out exactly how to tap his mana for what he wants to do this turn. Remember, he does have a Warm Coil engine in hand. It's going to be Stone Brain first. Yeah. There will be some mana floating. It'll be four colorless. Nielsen's going to help Calcano out with that. He's going to use two to activate this, and we'll see what it is. I'll name Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. Well, you heard it. Had the read. There it is. Calcano names Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. That was the card that Simon Nielsen needed to find a way to get back into this game. Christian correctly identifying that, look, Simon, you don't need Tron anymore. You have all the mana in the world. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm scared of is Ulamog. Yeah, and it is long gone now. So Nielsen will be without the extremely powerful Eldrazi for the rest of this game. A new card will be coming here, given the Stone Brain's text. So a little shuffle present, all that jazz. Looks like Oblivion Stone. Put a fake counter on Karn. Gonna put a fake counter on Karn. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure if uh, if Simon did draw a card from that Ulamog that was exiled from the grip. Yeah, maybe Doesn't not. Doesn't look like he didn't. Right. Oh, really? 
This is a relic progenitus that will cycle. Oh, stop, 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 it looks like the players are catching it okay. now. What was the shell with the stone? Oh, ring? right. I forgot uh, to draw the card. Uh, yep. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna so, give you a and what did happen since then? Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to have our table spotter, uh, and these players are going to yeah, basically like, uh, go yeah, over yeah, the I exchange here. So we'll listen to them discuss it for us. Okay. The fix we have for this is to make we make you draw the card immediately. Was forgotten, but we are not rewinding. So the relic is on the field. Well, but I just draw the card immediately. Okay, and yeah. have I activated the relic ability yet? Not yet. Okay. So let's draw okay. you the card. Okay. Yes. Sorry. So I draw a card. Yeah. Yep. And yes. we are fixed. Yes. yes. We are fixed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Who gets the warning? Do we both get warnings? Okay. Okay. A simple mistake in the heat of the moment here on Sunday. These things do happen. Both players agreed on exactly what did take place, and we are all good to go now as an ancient stirrings has been found here for Simon. So one interesting thing here is you saw Christian go ahead and put that fate counter on the Karn Liberated. Christian Kalkana knows about the opposing Oblivion Stone. Guess what? That fate counter, it applies to both Oblivion Stones. It sure does. So Simon Nielsen plays and pops his Oblivion Stone. Guess that Karn still gets to stay on the battlefield. It's still just hanging. Yeah, it's still there. It's still just doing its thing. Yeah. We, we've seen a lot of fate counters being distributed. We, we have. In this time. We have. <laughs> I said it earlier today, I still can't believe that Oblivion Stone is just around doing its thing <laughs> after all these years. What a card. This will be a stirrings. Take a look at the top five. Karn the Great Creator, Oblivion Stone, Dismember, another Oblivion Stone, and a Urza's Power Plant finally here for Simon Nielsen. Does Simon need the Power Plant? Nope. I'm going to go with the Karn the Great Creator. Now, remember, Simon has already... Played a Pithing Needle. Has it been exiled, though? Uh, that Pithing Needle was killed via Besaju, but it may have been exiled from the Relic of Progenitus right. activation, which means that it would be eligible Simon to be grabbed again. Yeah. Simon can get it back. Yeah. So you can go Karn into dumb, actually, get a Pithing Needle. No I guess you would have countered my stirrings. There's the tower. This is a Karn yeah. the Great Creator. That's going to resolve. Again, starts at five loyalty, does this incredibly powerful Planeswalker. So good. And it generally goes from five to three in most instances. Well, now the big question, and Simon's even asking this to himself, is what am I going to do with this? <laughs> <laughs> and see, some... some some Tron games like this in the mirror, and these two players, they commented on it. So this, this game is just weird. Yeah. Right? This absolutely. isn't normally how it goes, but it right. normally is a weird thing to say, Paul, because there are the games where it's a runaway, and then there's stuff that looks like and this. You know, 90% of the games we've seen in this head-to-head -head are, like, are the games that you just talked about. Yeah. But this one is extremely interesting. So let's, let's dissect this liquid metal coating. You can tap it and target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types until end of turn. And that's any permanent, of course. Right. So it looks like Simon is going to target the Karn the Great Creator on the upkeep and alongside, excuse me, he's going to no, target the Karn no, Liberated. No! And alongside the Karn the Great Creator, that means the Karn Liberated uh, can't be used this turn. Right. So it's kind of like a pithy needle, but with more applications potentially later on. Absolutely. But now Calcano has found his own car in the great creator. Yeah, so around and around we go. Oh my. Oh, wow, what a game. So C Christian can play Karn, has access to eight mana, could get a Cityscape leveler here if yep. he wants to get the Karn off the battlefield and have a big threat in play. And that would be all the mana for the turn. But it solves the biggest problem here for Calcano if he decides to go that route. So step one, <laughs> let's cast the Planeswalker. <laughs> And that's exactly what Calc will do. Well, if you weren't familiar with Tron Sideboard before, we're very familiar now. And this feels like it's a Cityscape leveler here, right? You add pressure while also killing that Karn. There we go. Yes, indeed. And this is another card with a very powerful cast trigger. So, the leveler will blow up the Karn, the Great Creator. 
A power stone will be made in exchange. Doesn't seem like the fairest of trades. Right. And remember, that power stone cannot be utilized when an opponent has a Karn the Great Creator in play. Yes. And Simon Nielsen does not have Ulamog again. That has been stone-brained. Not an out here for Simon Nielsen. Cock figuring out how to use this Karn Liberated now that it is active again. Looks like just going to plus it and exile a card here from Simon Nielsen's hand. Yeah. It is still an artifact from the Liquid Metal Coating, but because Karn the Creator is no longer in play, can utilize the ability. And now there finally is an Urza's power plant to go along with an Oblivion Stone that can't be activated. So Simon fought a good fight here without Tron, but I think this is going to be a little too much to overcome here. Uh, he's going to continue to play through this game. There could be a series of draws that allows him to get back into it. Yeah, that's... I guess it starts with a, a Karn. Of, Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Of, of some variety. Yeah. See, so Galcano has another copy of the One Ring. Yeah. So two of those, that Gantha that was grabbed a little bit earlier in the game, and a Warm Coil Engine that's been over there for a very long time. We'll focus on those in just a minute. We'll turn our attention to that liquid metal coating that's headed to the graveyard as another power stone has been made. Cityscape Leveler is going to bring Nielsen from 20 to 12. And we'll see how Calc wants to use Can we, the original Karn. Looks like that's going to take care of the Urza's mine. Yep. One of the mines. There's still one in play here for Simon Nielsen. My strategy. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm trying to win this on Fortitude. Yeah. All right, Karn the Great Creator going down to one. This will be a liquid metal coating. Walking Ballista here, maybe. Could be a liquid metal coating as well. Well, yeah. One of the things. Yeah. Basically, the way that the way that the, the Simon can turn this game around, and I think this is part of the reason he didn't play uh, the Tron Land, because it could get killed, is that if he draws an answer yeah. to Karn the Great Creator, okay. he can kill Karn the Great Creator. Uh, Play the power plant and blow up the Oblivion Stone. Yeah. But none of it matters unless he actually takes out the Karn the Great Creator. Right. Which a chromatic sphere does not do. Nope. Oh, and found <laughs> Tron. Yep. He had that power plant. He finally played it, but it does not matter. So, Christian Galcano is going to win a very fascinating game one against Simon Nielsen. The mono green Tron mirror goes to the Mets play. Now we turn our attention to game number two. Simon Nielsen on the play, Christian Galcano on the draw. Both players. Oh my, Paul. Seven? Oh, almost Sorry. seven cards for both. Almost I just want to make sure I get both. that in okay. there. <laughs> we have our first Gemstone Cavern. Yeah, oh, on okay. coverage, my friend. Okay. That allows you to potentially cast the Sylvan Scrying here on turn yeah. one. But Kalkano again with Natural Tron mm -hmm. in the opener. Hey, you know, I'm getting Toralf Severin vibes here. Oh, is that, what it is? Tour. is that what it is? When he was in the top eight, didn't need to search it out very often. He just kind of had it in the opener. Makes things a lot easier. Must be nice. I can only imagine. This is an Ursus mine here from Nielsen, who has a tower and a power plant as well. So we got Natural that's Tron's. Both. That's, that's Natural Tron rolled up for both. <laughs> oh, man. It's not a hard game. Yeah. Both players probably had to do that a few times to make it all the way to the it, top eight of this Pro it Tour. It certainly right? doesn't hurt. Chromatic sphere here for Kalkana. Into another sphere and passing of the turn. Kalkano's payoff at this stage of things is Worm Coil Engine. We'll see what these draw steps do yield <laughs> over, the, over the next couple of turns. As you do see for Simon Nielsen, has Tron rolled up, payoffs are the One Ring and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, and has just drawn a copy of Ancient Stirrings. All right, Simon kept this hand and has played nothing. You have to think he probably just kept a hand with Tron, if you're Christian Calcano. That's a lock. Yeah. Otherwise, there would have been mulligans. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So, Calcano 
Might want to do some digging here to see if you can find one of the two Bosages in deck. Cal going to burn through these chromatic spheres here. A couple of new cards coming. Oblivion Stone and Ulamog among them. The Gemstone Cavern does allow you to run out the stone this turn if you want. And there is the O-Stone. Going to see some more explosive gameplay this time around. Uh, I think Both so. Both on Tron, turn three. And now this is the one ring. Yes. So immediately a burden counter will be added, and a Karn the Great Creator is the draw. All right, Christian, what is your follow-up? Will you top deck a Karn liberated here? The answer is no. no. It'll be a copy of the One Ring instead. Now, there is a little bit of an interesting situation here in so far as Calcano, because of that Gemstone Caverns, in combination with the Tron, has eight mana on turn three. Right. Whereas Simon Nielsen, of course, has seven mana on turn three. Now, had Simon Nielsen had eight mana on turn three, the ability to play the One Ring and draw the Karn and play the Karn was open. Right. Absolutely. So Calcano, weirdly enough, could play the One Ring after playing this tower, draw a card, and if he draws a card in the Great Creator, actually be able to play it. Yeah, so Calcano here is, is going to be running out the One Ring here and is going to try to find a way to disrupt the Tron on Simon Nielsen's side. Because if he can't, Simon's got Tower here. Mm -hmm. That's going to give him 10 mana. He can slam Ulamog here, turn four, and that probably locks up the game. Boy, it seems more than likely that it would. Now, you see the card that he drew off of the One Ring. It was just a copy of Urza's Mine. Yeah, that, that is not Boseju. Simon will be able to play a turn four Ulamog. Now, if Kalkano was on the play, he would have done the exact same thing. He sure would have. He sure would have. So Kalkano's going to think about things a little bit here before passing the turn back. So, partner, Your turn. let's turn our attention to Simon Nielsen's turn. He's going to untap and lose a life and fall down to 19. New card coming here in just a second. We'll focus on that in just a minute. We know Ulamog's coming. What are you targeting? The power plant and the mine. Okay. That's what it's, <laughs> but I don't think it, yeah. Uh, fake <laughs> yeah. Power plant and tower? Yes. Okay. And the reason I find this sort of interesting, is there a reason to kill the <laughs> right. one ring? Is yeah. there a reason to kill the Oblivion Stone? Yeah. But I mean, I, there's just, I don't see Christian able, the, Christian is not going to be able to come back from this. It's, or it's going to be extremely unlikely. You need to... Find the pieces of Tron, but before you do, the Ulamog is just going to close it out. I mean, I assume it's difficult to come back from a spot like this. Now, Kalkano did draw another tower. Okay. But Simon does have a follow-up here too, right? I mean, we're looking at Karn the Great Creator mm -hmm. with a ton of mana next turn. Simon could simply stone brain away the missing piece of the Tron land next turn. And then I don't think Christian can do anything on four. I suppose he could play a one ring but we'll have no cards left in deck after two attacks from the Ulamog? Yeah. And now Kalkano's going to go deep into the tank. What are my outs? Yeah, how do I get myself out of the stickiest of situations here? Yeah. Nielsen's draw step, by the way, last turn was the copy of Dismember that he's holding. Again, not a great card in the matchup, but we don't start sideboarding until game number three here in the elimination rounds. So that's why that's still in the deck here in game two. Yeah, that's the first thing that's going <laughs> yeah. to yeah. Oh, yeah. leap its way into the sideboard. See you later. And Simon can close his eyes and take a card at random from the sideboard, and it will likely be an improvement. There's the Tower of Power. One power plant away from having Tron again. Nielsen's going to add a burden counter and pick up a chromatic sphere and a Urza's yes. Mine yep. and now fall down to 17. Yep. The draw for the turn was that one of Chromatic Star. Combat? Yeah. Vroom. Yes. Just 20 of them. Just 20? That's, still, that's only in like half. Yeah, that's like a third of your deck. You're many. good. Eight, nine, yeah. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
All right, so there's the 20. <laughs> they may look at these cards together. To get some information on what's long gone. <laughs> Ugin among the crew. Like, oh, ah, don't wow. need to look. Wow. Oh, I man. do not care. Well, Calcano <laughs> does. He wants to know what he's drawing to, if yeah. anything at all. Uh, to Bonk. Yep. Okay, corn. There's the great creator. Yeah. Calc might draw in response here. Yeah. All right. And you, you heard Calcano say you get the liquid metal coating, and I'm basically locked. So Simon Nielsen, off of the back of a very timely Ulamog the Sleeves Hunger, nice will win game number two. The Tron Mirror Paul, sure. it's all tied up. Yeah, two extremely different games here. Game two, you see what the Tron decks are capable of doing when it just kind of hits its stride, natural Tron. Game one was a much more interesting affair. But now Indeed. after sideboard, we get to start thinking about all the little extra pieces of interaction, all the little ways that you can, of, of cards you can bring out of the board to try to stop what your opponent's trying to do. Well, we're going to get to that first sideboard game after a short break here from the booth. Game number three of our semifinals coming up right after this. At some point, we're going to have to. We are here in Barcelona, Spain. Pro Tour, the Lord of the Rings, the elimination rounds are very much underway. Game number three between Christian Calcano and Simon Nielsen will be heading your way in just a moment. We are all tied up here at one and one. Thank you so much for joining us. Paul, Tron doing Tron things. One game weird, second game, not so much. Yeah, and uh, turns out, you know, going first is uh, pretty important in this matchup. Oh, so. Yeah. Uh, both players winning the games that they go first. So if you're Calcano, you're just going to have to hope that that continues to be the trend here. Uh, Calcano uh, looking to bring in not that much because he's already almost pre-boarded for this matchup. Remember, yeah. Handshake is the one that changed their, their, changed their deck dramatically by adding cards like this member into their deck, whereas Calcano has the more streamlined, more linear version of Mono Green Tron. Well, 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 we are going to have something interesting take place here, my friend. You take a look at Calcano's hand. Sylvan Scrying, Ancient Stirrings, okay, those are normal mainstays. We see those from time to time. Forest, sure, you're going to want to play some of those for a myriad of reasons. But the Stone Brain, 
has yeah. been boarded in. And we saw this a little bit earlier in the tournament yeah, against Simon Nielsen. <laughs> and yes, it's extremely powerful, especially if you can get it out. And especially if you're on the play. Yes. Right? Because if you're on the draw, sometimes it's uh, not going to be good enough if, uh, if you target one of the drawn lands because they'll already potentially have that in play on turn three. Mm -hmm. Christian does have to consider the possibility of Haywire Might. Sure. So that is a card that's a two of in most Tron lists just because of how powerful it is. Just an excellent way to deal with problematic enchantments, cards like Blood Moon, and of course opposing copies of the One Ring. So if he plays this out, it is possible that Simon could play out the Might. <laughs> Nielsen's facial expression tells <laughs> the whole story. <laughs> You're going to see Simon draw a card for the turn. It's an ancient stirrings. All right. Well, he's got that Urza Saga. Might be looking for uh, a fair game, unless you can find a might here. So let's start by drawing a card. Sinners is mine. All right. Well, backup plan. I'm Back listening. We, um, backup plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still listening. <laughs> yeah. This one? <laughs> this one might be tough. Right. This one might be tough here. Now, Calcano, um, this uh, Urza Saga might have to do some work here from Simon Nielsen's side, as we know that he no longer will have the ability to create lots and lots of mana, as Calcano almost assuredly will be going ahead and using Stonebrain on one of the Tron pieces in Simon's well, deck. Now things have gotten even more interesting, and, and here's why. So Simon's land this turn is not a Tron, so he can't threaten completing the Urza Tron on turn three. The, the soon as he can get to it is on turn number four, and he just took a Karn the Great Creator off of the Ancient Stirrings. Uh, now, so do you name Karn the Great Creator? Now, at the end of day number one, Zach Keeney played against Simon Nielsen. Those two are teammates on Team Handshake. As you're going to see an Ancient Stirrings here from Calcon. Needs a land here. If he misses on land, it is a disaster. It's not. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Is that all five? Uh, is that all five or is it four? Oh, he's one, one more. more. I think one more. himself. Wow. Oh, he four missed. Four he missed. He oh, can't my use the Stone God. Brain. Oh, my goodness. That is a yeah. disaster. Simon <laughs> will slam Karn the Great Creator next turn. Stone Brain off. Expedition uh, Map off. Oh, like you'd have a colorless card in there, but no land, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whew. I thought it was like five colors. Wow. Uh, I mean, you're a huge favorite there to find the land with yeah, the stirrings. No, no. <laughs> and he ha he played it out, but yeah, now yeah. the fact that he doesn't have a land in hand, yeah, I guess I'll take Simon this. will be able to completely <laughs> oh shut him off yeah, the okay. two artifacts he has in play. Okay, so... Wow. wow. I mean, the percentage chance of hitting a land there is pretty high. Frank... Frank? Yeah, I don't know what Frank Carson's doing in the back, but I'd love to know, as here is Karn, the great creator. Every time we see the stone braiding its Tron cast on turn two, it's never as simple as it appears. Yeah, What's going well, on in this you know, tournament? They have a normal draw, it's pretty good. But I guess. I mean, this was the correct thing. Christian just yeah. really unfortunate there on that ancient stirring. Karn's going to go get a liquid metal coating, and we're going to pass the turn back over to Kalkana, who's got two oh, warping whales, man. a sylvan scrying. Pro pro I mean, almost certainly just drew the land. Yeah, oh, of course. Of course. Of course. course. Yeah, forest. It's not our first where tournament. Were you? Where were you? Yeah. Where were you when I needed you most? Oh, my oh gosh. no. All right, so Nielsen's going to draw a card. Saga's going to go up to Chapter 3. The Sage Who Endures is what Simon did draw. So you can... Load a mana. Go get a map. If you want. Although there is that. No. I was like, there's that stone brain in play. Sure. But it doesn't do anything. No, 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 no. It is a shiny artifact with nothing to do. And also, on if you're a Simon side, I mean, Calcano, you drew a land, but it was a second forest. Mm -hmm. So not that scared, right? Mm -mm. No threat of Tron next turn. It looks like Simon is going, well, he's thinking. So I'm curious, I'm curious if Simon has interest in making a construct here while well, he still can. Right. Is that the game he wants to play, or does he want to just continue find, developing his board with mana, mm -hmm. right? Will that, will that be the difference here? Okay. okay. So there's a construct. And now 
the saga will bite the dust, yes. and it's time to search. It'll be, we believe, get a mite. Map. Yep. Get a mite after the board. Those, those are the two cards that he brought yeah. to the front of his deck. And it's going to be a haywire mite. That's great days. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Was Calcano just supposed to fire off that stone brain? And I don't just... think so. I don't think so. I mean, with the mulligan, he was so low on resources. I feel like you really want to just continue building out your board, right? You, you, you play the stirrings. Hopefully, you hit another try and land. Activate the stone brain. Next turn, activate your map. I'll make a scion. Yep. So the liquid metal coating comes down. And this is all in response to liquid metal coating targeting the Urza's tower. Now, Khan's right. going to plus and blow that up because it's an artifact yeah. and it costs zero. Yeah. This is the one two punch. Yeah, I used this on your tower. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You see the little bit of conversation oh, that, between the two. Last turn. Yeah, I got the last turn. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Yep. So, so, I mean, so, this is sorry. basically going to lock it up here. Yeah. Yep. Simon Nielsen has the ability to kill a land <laughs> every single turn. Yep. And there's no meaningful way for Calcano to get the Karn the Great Creator off the battlefield. Yeah. I'm being told that it was an 86% chance oh, to get a land. No. 86%. No. I think you'd take that. Don't say that out loud. Oof. Oof. Oh, yeah, I can't beat the construct. Yep, he's locked up. Jeez. Simon Nielsen going to win game number wow. three here over Christian <laughs> oh, Calcano. I cannot believe it. Mr. Checklist card is one game away from the finals of this Pro Tour. Calcano's keeping seven. Nielsen down to four here for game four. Yep. Nielsen's hand, but perhaps setting up for a turn four Tron. If you lead with Ancient Stirrings on turn one here, try to find either a power plant or a mine, and then you have the Sylvan Scrying. Okay. Urza's power plant and Urza's tower among those cards. Yeah, right away. Can you believe there's a land in there? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a pretty good chance. Like, I don't know, just going to like 86%. Yeah, that's nuts. Kind of came up with that one yeah. out of nowhere. Back over to Christian we go. Christian find a missing Tron land here. Doesn't look like it. Oh, there is the two mana artifact we once this? again. Are we, 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 we going to try this again? Are we, do, are we doing this again? No, he's got the extra land this time, are we, Cedric. Are we doing this All right? again? Well, he's not going to get turn three Tron. It's true. So probably it's true. That's that's definitely not going to happen. Yeah. I think it might be different if Calcano found a plant or, or mine here, because then you just probably want to play that and play the turn three Tron. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, this decision is actually somewhat difficult because Calcano can further build towards, like, getting the Tron. Like, could cast Sylvan's right. Brying this turn, right? Yeah. Go get a power plant. Has a uh, map on the battlefield already. It can go get the mine to complete right. the Tron <laughs> and everything, right? Like, that's... that's or yeah. it could just be... Uh, Play a land, play stone brain. Yeah, right. And thing. let's actually try this again. <laughs> All right, there's a forest. We're going to run it back. We're going to run it back. <laughs> run it All back, right. he says. All right. Here's the stone brain again. Expedition map to draw here All for Simon right. Nielsen. I think Simon Simon at the, has to think, okay. Plan, wait, we talked about the plan B. Yeah. Didn't need to implement it that time. No. Right? <laughs> no. Didn't need to implement it. We thought it was going to happen. We, we thought so. And now this turn, it's it's actually just playing Urza Saga again, and now Sylvan Scrying. I right. Wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if he gets another Saga. I really wouldn't. Well, could get Besaidu. Okay. Right. Will be Besaidu. Yeah. Because Saga can get map into either another Besaidu or the Saga, depending on the situation. Sure. And it's clear that Christian is going to try to go for the Stone Brain here, and Simon's going to try to keep Christian off of Tron as well. Okay. <laughs> I want Christian to just lead out with the ancient stirrings for us, just to kind of yeah, sure. let Simon sweat yeah, a little bit. I like it. I like it. Oh, well, you asked for it. I think you're about to get it. Yeah. Well, wants to yeah, find the uh, missing Tron it. piece. It's, very game. <laughs> it's the exact same board. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stir it up. Haywire might among these cards. There's a car and liberate a warping whale. We'll see what Kakano selects here in just a moment. Got to give him the head shake or something, you know? 
Just a little. Not again. Oh. Wow. So, Paul, we assume that Stonebrain will be fired off here in just a moment. Right. Tr just Tron piece, you think? Yeah, I mean, d d well, you don't necessarily have to fire it off immediately this turn, right? Because well, you know your opponent just got Besaidu, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I mean, oh. And Besaidu can blow up the Stone Brain? Right. So I actually think because of that, you're forced to do it. Because then they're going to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah think, because I right. think they'll just besage you the Stonebrain. Absolutely. And Stonebrain can only be of course. at sorcery speed. Exactly. That, yeah. that, that's the big thing. Yeah. The fact that Stonebrain has to be used at sorcery speed means Christian I needs to fire it off immediately. <laughs> I, I figured. <laughs> there was no so I'm there. really curious what the name is here. Is there's another tower. All right. Um, I'll target you, and I'll name uh, Urza's Tower. All right. All right. Thank you. There goes the, yeah. Thank you. He's, He's like, like I want action. <laughs> yeah. I knew you had that one. Yeah, exactly. That's the one you named. Yeah. All right, so this is gone. You can yeah. take a look at my sweet yeah. cyborg stretch. Yeah, I think Kalkano wanted to hit a card that wasn't in Simon's hand here. Yeah. So the towers are going to leave. Tron will never be completed for Simon Nielsen this game, and he will draw a card from the Stone Brain here in just a moment. But we have seen this Tron deck capable of winning without Tron, right? With oh, the Karn. Wow. Extremely <laughs> powerful dagger. card. <laughs> it, feels like, it feels like we've seen this Tron deck capable of winning through everything this week. Yeah. We were yeah. Friends. Pretty unbelievable, honestly. There should be a fourth one there. Yeah, it's there somewhere. All right, we found it. Sure. Oh. Just it's the time I tried to board it out so I can find yeah. stone brain. Now, that would be next level. Just uh, three Ursus Towers. Mm. That's when I would start questioning things. That would be A level. Yes. <laughs> I don't know which one. Previous level? Yes. <laughs> okay. But this started after us. We agree, right? All right, so the towers are gone, and now you see exactly what Simon Nielsen is working with. He's got the fours, he's got an Urza Saga uh, on one counter going to two so shortly. <laughs> Power plant, Besaidu, okay, that can so be an answer to a bevy here? of things yeah, in the expedition. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So in the short term, I think the plan is just to crank out some constructs here. Yeah. And maybe I mean, just go beat down. That, that, that is now the current plan, right? Again, Calcano on the two Urza's towers. Don't have to use the Besaidu immediately. Make a contract here, no real other line until Sorry, potentially turn four, when that's when you can play cards such as the One Ring and Karn the Great Creator. Yep. Okay. So Kokano's going to write down the three known cards. There's one mystery. Let's make it two after the draw step. Here for Simon Nielsen, whose saga now does climb up to chapter two. Those, uh, those new cards are Oblivion Stone and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger. We're a ways away from those. And this, Paul, is where this, this Urza Saga innovation Actually, looks pretty darn good. Yeah, right. This is a way to maybe steal this game. I mean, th th this is kind of the angle that Simon currently has. And we've discussed it a little bit earlier in the day. Urza Saga, at one point not too long ago, was arguably the most powerful card in modern. Yeah, and it's got very low representation this weekend. And when we saw it in this deck list, we were all just kind of like, "Well, I don't know what's really going on with that." I guess. You you know, expedition map, etc. But yeah, it's looked good. Yeah. So outside of, of course, the the twelve Tron lands that you have to play, the one beside you, and something like two or three forests, the deck does have the ability to have a couple of flex slots in those colorless mana sources. Oh, for sure. You've seen cards like Blast Zone as a one of that people play. Yep. Sanctum of Ugin. Yep. So I think yeah, uh, Team Handshake just identified search. that go and, and just went. Search What's the most search. powerful colorless land we can think of? Or is a saga? Yeah, I think they found it. Yeah, I really do. And I'll play it and try. So this will be. Urza's power plant, and now Calcano is going to scrying for the missing Tron piece in Urza's mind. Okay, so no, th did not decide to just jam the Karn the Great Creator here. Instead, going for the Tron here, forcing Simon to utilize the Basaju, and if he does, might not get to get an additional activation here off that Urza Saga. Five. Calcano with. Five cards in hand. Nurse is mine, of course. Everybody knows from the Sylvan Scrying. Warm Coil Engine, Haywire Might, a Forest, and a Karn, the Great Creator, are the leftovers. Here comes the Construct token. It'll be a 1 1 for now. Gonna be a little bit larger here in just a second. Nielsen will draw, picked up a Karn, the Great Creator of his own. Ooh. Could just play it this turn, can float the mana here off the Saga. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is a tough call. This is a tough call for multiple reasons. One, Karn the Great Creator, one of the best cards in the matchup. Yeah, bar none. Absolutely. However, 
the land to play to be able to cast it is Besaichu. You're right. Which, you're right. Uh, well, that's got some uses in a spot like this. Right, and if you're Simon, you're, you're, you feel like you basically have to kill that power plant that's in play. Certainly feels that way, right? So. Really, really tough spot here for Simon. I got no idea what the right call is on this. Yeah, I, I mean, you could float a mana, get a map, right? Use the other mana to crack the map, get a land, play it, and then, and then and you then play a land, you. then you can besage you. Okay. Well, he is floating a mana. Dude. No, not again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh like, that's no. I, I thought you meant like you intentionally oh, left it in. <laughs> he did oh, it again. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, you did he even it wrote it yesterday time. on his notepad, oh. I forgot to board out the liquid metal code. Oh, kept boy. it in so once again someday. after sideboard. <laughs> so now he knows that's not a way he can lock up some lands. Is it um, still in his deck? And so let's provide a little clarity on this situation real quick. The liquid metal coating he searched for last game with Karn. Right. right. That's how he locked Krishna out of the game. Now, you can forget to sideboard it out or leave it in. Your deck can't, present, can't be presented with 61 cards or above the 60 card uh, minimum threshold because you can have 61 and then 14 your sideboard. Yeah, you can board in your whole sideboard you if, sure you can. if you want to. You sure can, if you want to. So that, that, that he hasn't done rule. anything wrong. No, uh, <laughs> it's a mistake. It is a mistake, <laughs> yes. But from a rules perspective, he hasn't done anything wrong. Right, yeah. exactly. I'll but, take you for whoops. one. <laughs> puny damage. I'll take the puny damage. So Expedition Map, as you mentioned, Paul, will search for and get a basic force. Play that, and now the Besaju is going to be channeled here in just right. a moment. Yeah. Then I'll pass the turn. Yes. I'll do a puny Besaju in your draw step. Right, okay. And it will be beside you in the draw step, as Simon did mention, on that Urza's power plant. Yeah, and the reason to do it in the draw step is if somehow Christian would draw the last copy of Forest in his deck, mm -hmm. you use the Besaju, and Christian is now unable to find the Forest. Unfortunately for Simon, that Forest is still left in the deck, so Falcano will search that out. Does enter the battlefield untapped from Besaju. Going to be a real tough game here for Simon. No Tron lands available to him for this game. Successfully stone-brained this time <laughs> around. <laughs> the stone brain has been struggling to get the job done <laughs> this weekend in the mirror. This card hasn't been, Karn? though. No. That's Karn the Great Creator. One of the best possible cards in the mirror. It's going to start at five loyalty. Did Christian keep the liquid metal coating in his sideboard? <laughs> not, not a bad card to get. Wouldn't be the worst place to be. Could also get Stone Brain. Right? Yeah, it Just is Stone a, Brain yeah. again. Maybe named, maybe Karn the Great Creator or anything like that. Yeah, it is exiled. As the Stone Brain actually exiles itself when you activate it, so you can kind of loop it a little bit with Karn the Great Creator. Right. It's a combo. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. It's not not a comp. <laughs> Is it a synergy? Sure. All right. Sure. I'll take it. I'll I'm, take I'm, it. Not sure, I'm not sure what it is, really. <laughs> I know it's good. It's a favorable interaction. Yeah, I like that. Yes. I like that. Nailed it. Karn's going to tick on down to three counters. Now, yeah, Kyle, Kyle's got a lot to think about. This, yeah, this decision doesn't seem easy it. either. No, not at all. He's got to consider what, you know, the, the worst possible thing that Simon can do is play a card of his own, right? Mm -hmm. Next turn. Looks like it's going to be liquid metal coating, and now Kyle is going to play that haywire might. Okay, that does provide some protection potentially mm -hmm. from the construct if Simon can somehow play two artifacts this turn yep. and then attack with the construct. Simon Straw. Oh, there's a land. That's an Urza's Mine. And now this is a Karn of his own. All right, it's a Karn off. Now, what is Simon going to do with his is the big question. Yeah, remember, the artifacts have, now, have all been turned off. Doesn't have the mana to get something big like 
a Cityscape leveler or anything like that. Uh, Team Handshake's version of the deck plays four main deck copies of the One Ring, so that's also not an option. Of course, the One Ring, not great here either, mm -hmm. against an opposing Haywire Might plus a Karn, the great creator. Decisions, decisions. Oh, so you might be thinking it up. You might be thinking take up to six. Remember, does start on five loyalty. Right. If there's nothing great to get here, because I'm struggling to think of something right now, perhaps you just preserve the loyalty here and uh, wait until Christian gives you a little more information and then decide next turn. On Christian's side. Needs a power plant, but has the mana to just hard cast Worm Coil Engine this turn. Hey, that'll work. That's good. Oh. What can you do? Without Tron, you can't go Karn Exile. Looks like Karn's going to go up to four counters and pass the turn back, so... These last couple of Karn activations. Not searching for anything just yet as a chromatic sphere. The draw there for Simon Nielsen. Yeah, remember, all these artifacts are shut down. Karn is so, so good in the mirror. All right, now it's time to go searching. Oh. Okay, there you go. It, it was been it since we've seen Phyrexian Metamorph. Yeah, it was it was Metamorph or or, or um, excuse me, the uh, Ensnaring Bridge. Sure, Actually, right. That would have been the other one. For game three, even bought it out. <laughs> and then I left my coding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but he left the local metal coding still in. He's like, check out this cool sideboard thing I did. Yeah. But yeah. then I still forgot to do yeah, that. Yeah, maybe a little, yeah. little touch of right. Expedition map is going to come down after that Phyrexian Metamorph that is copying Worm Coil Engine. Reason for that is it's another artifact there for the construct. So the construct that Simon does have on the battlefield is currently a 3 3. Oh, Christian has Karn liberated here. Don't need the Tron. Can just run it out this turn. And yeah, that's. That's going to be tough because that is the clean answer like to a worm coil engine. Battles, you know? yeah. like it's a nice standard format, I think. The old mono green yeah. control here. Yes. <laughs> so, Karn Liberated starts on six loyalty. And now kalkano has got to decide what to do with it. That's going to put him in a commanding position. Oh, absolutely. No Tron land to be afraid of off the top. I imagine this is just going to go ahead and hit that Phyrexian Metamorph, which is currently copying. Uh, the worm coil engine. Yeah, it's interesting. I think between the two options, it's that or the car. All right, you could also yeah. do the car. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think what this does a nice job right. of this just kind of stops this kind of stops Simon Nielsen's ability to answer the car. Right, something like a pithing pithing needle. needle. Yeah. Uh, I'd be surprised. Certainly not Kalk. interested in attack. Yeah, I'd be surprised if Kalk wants to make an attack here. I think it's probably just defend my Planeswalkers for as long as I can because the advantages that those cards are going to generate will be too much for Simon to overcome. Yeah. And you take a look at the life totals. It's 19 to 18, so we're not really in a racing situation. Right. And, wow, if, if Christian actually has access, access to one more mana, he won't have it, though. But the Haywire Might also turned on. Clean answer to Worm Coil Engine. No? Unfortunately not. I believe it's non-creature oh, on Haywire Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I only know this Did because... You try it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Non-creature. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. I was, me. I was playing in an RCQ and set up a beautiful turn, all of my mana, everything, and then by my last green mana, I'm going to take care of your big artifact creature. My opponent's like, can't do that. I'm like, I'm really glad I spent like nine minutes figuring out this turn that I could not do. Did you win the match? I did. <laughs> no justice. Yes. No, right. justice. No, just, no justice. No justice. Right. Well, we've all been there. Now, Worm Coil Engines looks like they're going to trade. So here comes some Death Touch and Life Link artifact worms. I would like the Death Touch ones. <laughs> <laughs> now the construct that Simon has on the battlefield is a 4-4. Let's make it a little bit more into a 5-5. Now that Walking Ballista, it's just a 2-2 right now, but... It can't go active because of the Karn the Great Creator. Right. Yeah. And I mean, with double active Karn here, I just can't see how Simon, without the ability to draw Urza's Tower, gets out of this. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have the ability to make a large swell. It, and 
in combination with his artifacts are all turned off, there's no Oblivion Stone to save right. him in a spot like this. The draw steps are limited because you can't cycle through spheres and the singular chromatic star that they right. play. So Calcano, I think, is going to take a defensive approach to this game yep. because he doesn't have a reason not to. Right. Yeah, you can... Uh you do ha also have the mana. There's a gemstone caverns. You can go fetch a uh, cityscape leveler mm -hmm. here if you want. Perhaps kill the construct as it is the largest creature on the battlefield. Now it doesn't say non-token here, does it? No, that one. Right. That, that one's non-land. Okay. That was <laughs> just making sure. That's okay. Magic cards nowadays they do a lot of different things. Right. And this is also one of these positions here. If you think about, if you think about game three with Calcano and that ancient Stearns, right? He missed. Brutal, obviously. Yeah. You can let your tournament slip away in a spot like that. No, absolutely. Tilt, tilt's a real thing. Absolutely. And as and as chill and as laid back as the calculator is, I mean, that's brutal. You said eighty-six uh, percent. Absolutely, eighty-six percent. But you know, you also have, Christian's been around for a long time. You have yeah. you have to know. It's like, hey, that is. I know it's unlikely, but that's the risk you take. He understands that, and I'm sure he's run into situations like that many times before. Yeah, and he just really shrugged that off in a way that I think is pretty meaningful if he goes on to win this game and potentially this match against Simon Nielsen because that was the bad side of the variance. He yeah. caught the bad end of that, but he is still playing an excellent game here. And as he continues to take this defensive and thoughtful stance to this game, I'm having difficulty seeing a way that he loses it. Yeah, especially if you can just jam the Cityscape Leveler here, right? And I think Simon, that's what he might be thinking. Simon will just not have a way to get it off the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Karn in play, Haywire might, even a Haywire might would not work. Of course, uh, also it being a creature, right? That, there's I, that. I just learned that about Absolutely. like three minutes ago. So. <laughs> I'm here for you. Thank you. There's also the liquid metal coating in Christian Kalkana's <laughs> hand, which can slowly but surely Take out oh. Simon Nielsen's lands. Yeah, uh, and this. Is oh, zero. yeah, that's that's also good. This is base. This is a wrath. Yeah. So what we're going to see here is an engineer explosives, which can clear up the construct and the two worm tokens on Nielsen's side, the worm oh, tokens on Calcano's side, this, and now here comes an expedition map. Uh, and Calcano doesn't love the way that he sequenced this uh, turn, no, oh. right? <laughs> but I don't think it's the yeah. I don't think it's the end of the world. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking about a whole bunch of other things. Um, yeah, I'll target uh, a forest. Yeah, it looks like this liquid metal Cody is going to target that forest. It's an artifact now, which means that with Karn the Great Creator on the battlefield, that doesn't do anything. Sundering Titan is uh, not what the doctor ordered, I promise. Yeah, this should lock it up here. Craft the explosives if you need. Use the explosives to get the tokens off the battlefield. Construct down, double worm tokens down, walking ballista down. Everything down. So I imagine Christian's going to want to go ahead and pop the explosives here. Could also just line up some blocks. You do have an activation of the Haywire Might if you really want. I'm not missing anything here. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, before damage, I'll just pop the explosives. Yeah, okay. So there goes the EE. You heard Calcano verbally saying, am I missing anything? Kaboom. Everything dies. And now there is an Oblivion Stone and an Expedition map, which yeah. don't do anything. Yeah, so Kalkana will now have Tron. Uh, I guess I should have done that, but you can still do it. It's still <laughs> an You know, these two having some good back and forth banner between one another as Kalkana does search up that or is his power plant. Kalkana, in the games that he has won and is looks to be going on to winning, his games have been long. Yeah. Simon Nielsen's games that he have won in this matchup, they've been short. So Calcano is, ex you know, is expending a lot of mental energy uh, trying to navigate what have been some really weird games. Because again, a lot of people, when they think of Tron Paul, they think one, two, seven, play a big right. thing, play another big thing, you lose. That's not really what's happened here. For <laughs> yeah, well, you know, when you can play turn four or Ulamog, you can kind of turn off your brain. You sure can. Right? You sure can. But when you're on Christian Calcano's side, even if you're ahead here, you still have to think about all the different possibilities. Absolutely. And Calcano is in a commanding position, cannot really lose this game, but just making sure he doesn't make any misstep along the way. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're going to head back Christian's way. Simon's going to make him play this out and finish <laughs> him off, which, hey, we're on yeah. Sunday of a Pro Tour. I mean, you've got a Karn on seven. You've got a Liquid Metal Coating. You can kill two lands this turn if you'd like. Yep. With both down Karns down and the Liquid Metal forest. Coating. Down in my forest. There goes that forest. Yeah. Now, me, Paul, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Flawless Victory. Oh, no permanence? That's right. Okay. A little house rule. All right. Where I come from. Okay. That if, you're, if well, your opponent has no permanence, no talking. No talking. They can't talk. I don't think you're going to stop Simon from talking. <laughs> I, just don't I think you're right about that. See that as a thing. So. I think you're right about that. <laughs> Walking Ballista is going to get searched up here with Card the Great Creator. That'll close this game out pretty fast alongside oh, Urizatron. That's 369. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I believe. Yep. One floating. Yeah. You yeah. could just leave a forest back. 12. There it is. Yep. Uh, 16, right? So it's 16 mana, 8-8 eight, eight all day. <laughs> and this one closes the game out pretty quickly. Yes, it does. I'm finding a 16 on 12-sided die. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's uh, 16 oh, mana, true, so it's an 8-8. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah. 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, yeah, Upkeep the Quimetal Coating. Upkeep on your mind. And shut her down. Draw a card. Simon slash draw step. Not yet. Yeah. The one of stars. Simon <laughs> still, still playing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Uh, All right. I'm here for the new sub game. Can Jagatha get into the red zone? I mean, Christian can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Will Jagatha make an the appearance? The world is his oyster. Boom. Another, hey, just get that other land out of the... Yeah. Flaw. Yeah, oh, there yeah. we go. Oh, yeah. Now we got three more permanents <laughs> to go. No lands in play for you, Mr. Nielsen. That's right. All of the counters. You ever play a game with, like, a combo deck or something, and, like, you're going off, and you just want to do it, and just then your opponent concedes? Uh, yeah, right? you're kind of sad. Yeah, you're kind of right. sad, right? And right. Simon's not taking Christian's joy away right now. You're going to kill all my lands? Especially when I'm playing a combo deck and I'm not sure how I'm actually supposed to Absolutely. Win with it. And my Absolutely. opponent just concedes. I'm like, I, I need to figure out what I'm doing. That's when I'm playing like the amulet deck, for example. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I love this. Let Christian do his thing. There you go. Christian Calcano is going to win game number four here against Simon Nielsen. The Tron Mirror is going to game five. All right. What do we have? Well, I'll tell you, we got five cards over here for the calculator. Seven for Mr. Checklist card. That's Simon Nielsen. Going to kick things off with Inerza's Power Plant and a Chromatic Star. And Calcano here has, has Tron, right, with the Expedition Map Turn 1, Tower, Power Plant into the Urza's Mine. But Simon Nielsen is a piece short. Multiple pieces short, actually. <laughs> now, Simon kept this hand, oh. in my opinion, based off of the back of a turn three. Is turn he going to find an Urza land here? How insane would that be? That wouldn't be bad. All right. And didn't do it. But, but hey, that's a nice uh, that's consolation That's also prize. very, very good. Yeah, yeah. finding a Besaju here. But this is actually kind of one of the nice things about Neutron and this build of Handshake Tron, which is, yes, you're going to mulligan more often not to present Tron on turn three or something close to it. Right. But you can also keep a hand like this in the mirror, especially with this one of Talisman in the deck, which looks so weird, to be able to say, hey, I got a turn three card, and that's arguably the best card in the mirror. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's Nerja's Saga. Here is that yeah. Talisman of Reticence. Okay. Of Resilience, excuse me. And All now right. Simon's just going to pass the turn back. Yeah, with the Basaju to break apart Christian's Tron here. Simon's hand is very good. Yes. But go. I suppose you can just go Sylvan Scrying here, too. But doesn't have an actual land to play for the turn. Unless you're interested in playing the Basaju. Yeah. But this is... It's, so it's a little awkward right now. Because this is the turn where you want to use the, your Basaju, right? To prevent Calcano from going turn three, Karn, mm -hmm. right? You place two copies of it. Don't want that to happen. But if you do keep up the Basaju, what are you going to do? You have to Sylvan Scrying for a forest, right? That's the only way I can see Simon hitting his land drop for this turn while also using the Basaju. Which I think is still fine. Yeah. 
might fall a little too far behind because next turn with Yerza Saga, that's minus one land on the battlefield. Now, Calcano has the proverbial nuts here insofar as has the best payoff. Does have the Karn. Karn liberated. It's a big decision point here for Simon. Do you just go with the Boseju immediately, or do you place the Sylvan Scrying and hit your land drop this turn? We've talked about how Simon's games have been rather straightforward thus far in the games that he's won. Uh, this turn is anything but. Maybe not this one, because again, if you're using the Sylvan Scrying for a forest, that puts you further away from Tron, too. This is likely going to be one of the most important turns in this game. Yeah. I think this is the one that lays out the foundation for everything for Simon. Yes. His hand doesn't need Tron, right? Necessarily, you do have the One Ring and Karn the Great Creator in hand. He has really good pays off payoffs in both Karns, the One Ring. Paseju solves the problem of opposing Tron. Yeah, I think you get a forest. Because that ensures that next turn, you'll still be able to play Karn the Great Creator. Yep. So here is Sylvan Scrying. This one of Talisman, a team handshake playing, it's pretty darn good right now. Yeah. And when you see Simon Sylvan Scrying here for a forest, you have to be thinking, all right. Yeah, there's, you put the pieces together. There's a Basaju coming yeah. here. Yeah. If you're if you're Calcano, you've put the pieces together on what's gonna happen. Right. Do you search if you're Christian? Five in hand, right? Correct. Oh, with map? Right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm just like Yeah. Will Simon be so scared to the point of a natural tron that you just don't search and, and Simon just has to fire it off? The only, I'm just talking about the no, levels no, no, here, I, I, right? I, the, I'm, the, only reason, the only reason I wouldn't do that, I guess, is because of if, like, I have a tower in my hand. Now, here's... Boy, this is, this is something. So, Simon Besaju... And this is, like, totally random. Right. But Simon Besaju to power plant, not tower. Christian, ha I think, has another power plant in hand. Does he? Yeah. He does. Ooh. And I don't know how you make that decision, though, right? Yeah. You just kind of, it's like the first one they play, is that the one they have redundant yeah, copies of? Right. I mean, I, every, it's just like this game. You everyone has, like, kind of weird, like, theories on which one you're supposed to But you to have do. to mix it up. Because I, I, otherwise your opponent, with four games already. Sure. You know? And the, and the first land that Calcano did play was the power plant, then played the tower, if right. memory serves, and passed the turn back. Wow, okay. So Calcano with Tron here. What is Simon's best play next turn? It's not going to shut off a Karn. It will not shut off a Karn Liberated. And Simon Nielsen is a pretty long way away from Tron of his own. So Calcano's draw step for the turn was Karn the Great Creator. We know about the Karn Liberated that he's been working towards. Ancient Stirrings and Chromatic Sphere are also in hand now. And I think what Christian might be thinking about is around those two cards. What do I want to do with them? If I'm casting Ancient Stirrings, is there a particular card that I'm looking for? Yeah. Do I want to cast stirrings through a sphere, right. for example? Looks like he's just going to play stirrings yeah. off of his force. Doesn't have to worry about a Boseju just yet here. Four. There's a tower. <laughs> All right. Not Bosejuing that one. See, Paul, when game five starts, the banter ends. Oh, yeah. These two know what's on the line. It's seen in the Pro Tour Finals. Pro playing for the title of potentially Pro Tour champion. That's an Urza's mine. And that's what Calcano searched right. for with the expedition map. So right. he's not leaking any so info. No unknown information. Not just going to run out that power plant there. Yep. Can play out a sphere. Just pass the turn here. Could also crack. If you crack, you could find an Ancient Stirrings. 
you already have a forest in play for any other green card you can draw. Yeah. So he is going to crack that right now. And he drew a chromatic okay. star, and so he'll just play that. So we're going to head back Simon Nielsen's way. Ursa Saga is going to go up to chapter number three, and that'll leave Simon Nielsen with the decision on his turn as he draws a card. All right. Loading the mana here. Do you just slam Karn the Great Creator? And no lands here for Simon. I'm just thinking about the thing that, that Christian was considering. Simon does have an Ancient Stirrings in hand, right? Oh, boy. You float the colorless, but you have to play. If you play the Ancient Stirrings, you can hit the land that you need and play out the Karn. But if you sure. don't, no Karn. Yep. Couldn't happen twice, right? There's no way. Impossible. Yeah. Simon with a lot to think about right now. I think uh, Stonebrain was sideboarded in, so that okay. would be an incredible draw if he found that. But I think we already know what he drew this turn, right? Because the Urza Saga is currently on Chapter 3. Correct. Yeah. So the hand is face up. Stirring's map, ring, Karn, Karn. And again, the stage of the game that we are in is that Chapter 3 has been placed on the Urza Saga. We're at the beginning of main phase one, and Simon is deciding what to do with that saga. Is it make a construct? Is it flow to mana? And maybe most important of all, what am I finding with that saga trigger? Right. That's you, the calculus. If you make a construct, then that does put pressure on Christian if his play next turn is a Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. For example, his own Karn the Great Creator. And now he's finally come to, de to a decision we are, As Nielsen. Yeah. We are floating a mana here. That is correct. So it'll be a map. The map. And. Go ahead and get a mine. All right. So okay, so mine. he's going to sacrifice okay. that and get an Urza's mine. Play the mine. Okay. And then play the map and pass, and you have Tron. And then hope that Christian doesn't go. Tron land, Karn, get your Tron land. Here's your map. Yep. This, is, this is so tough here if you're Nielsen because you've blown up a land already to keep your opponent yep. off of Tron. And he just chose the wrong one. And it appeared. Appe well, he drew the tower too. He, right? he yeah. would have stirrings through a tower. Yeah, yeah. But Calcano already has the power plant rolled up. Now, the draw step for the turn was Oblivion Stone. And in a situation like this, if you're Calcano, you're, you're going to take quite a bit of time here. Yeah. Couple of reasons. One, how does Oblivion Stone affect the game right now? Not right. a ton. Not going to have the mana, especially. So, so, oh man. So here's the thing. You play Karn Liberated this turn. That cuts Simon off the Tron, right? Mm -hmm. So the only thing he can do is play a four mana spell next turn. Yep. Right. Then you have to consider cards like Karn the Great Creator. If you run out Karn the Great Creator, you could get a Liquid Metal. Right? And try to shut Simon down for one turn. That's, that's one thing that you yeah. want to do. But he's just going to go for, I mean. Hey, go big. When, when you have Karn liberated, I mean, this is usually just game most of the time. Go big or go home. That's right. That's exactly that's what Calcano is going to do. So it's down to three counters already. It's presumably targeting one of these Tron lands that will get exiled. We'll find out which one it's going to be here in just a moment. But in response, Simon is going to search up in Urza's mind with an expedition map, which makes it clear what the target was with Karn Liberated. So Calcano is going big game hunting right. with Karn Liberated. And, you know, Simon is one mana short here. If he had access to five mana, could play a Karn of your own, get a Pithing Needle, use the Pithing Needle on Karn Liberated. So at the very least, Christian should be able to get two activations here out of Karn Liberated. Nielsen has picked up a copy of Warm Coil Engine. And so now as we start taking a look at Simon Nielsen's hand, you can start eliminating options from his hand on what his realistic plays can be. Warm Coil Engine out of the equation. Same with Karn Liberated. The One Ring doesn't seem to be the place to be. No, no. Feels like it might be a little bit too slow. 
So if he elects to go to Karn the Great Creator, what are you going to do with it? It's... You, I mean, you can't even play anything next turn, so you have to think about what Christian might do with this Karn next turn. Mm -hmm. He could, if Christian is afraid of Tron, could just minus. So then getting a needle is not quite as exciting. You could go for the liquid metal coating to slowly start to try to whittle away at Christian's lands. But that wouldn't work if, if then Christian chooses to minus the Karn and get the opposing Karn off the battlefield. Of course, we also know Christian's hand, right? Christian has a Karn of his own. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm Nielsen in this spot, just from his side of things, because I don't know what's going on in Christian's hand. Right. Okay? I'm thinking to myself, I'm probably thinking to myself, what can I do in order to make this Karn impact this game the least? Okay? I've got a forest and a power plant in play. I have a mine in my hand. So I can play a mine. That's two-thirds of the way to Tron. Right. And I can threaten to complete Tron, which you clearly care about because of what you did with your Karn last turn. Right. So if I, pl if I play that mine and then play a Karn the Great Creator, then you have a real decision to make on, do you want to break up Tron or do you want to kill Karn with your Karn? Because I don't think plussing would be an option. Now, oh, I am right. a little surprised to see this, but this does effectively say four mana draw three. Yeah, right? it does. It does. So it's going to be the one ring this turn and that Simon Nielsen does play. And so, so now, I mean, but Christian does have Karn the Great Creator, right? Which would shut down this one ring. Mm -hmm. Of course, Nielsen doesn't know that. Of course, yep. of course, of course. Yep. But I'm, I'm, we're, now that we're on Christian's side, he's got to try to piece together what the worst possible situation is on the other side. Yes. Which is, of course, Karn liberated yes. plus Tron land yep. on Simon's side of the battlefield. So this is going to take some time here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a tremendously important turn here for Christian Calcano because you can either choose to play it safe, use the minus ability on the Karn Liberated to get another Tron land off the battlefield so that doesn't happen. Yep. But if you do, you lose the powerful Planeswalker. Yep. Right? Karn Liberated is extremely powerful. So if you lose the Karn Liberated, then you are just left with the Karn Degree Creator. Yeah. Which could be good enough. It could be. Right? It could be good enough. And it is pretty attractive, I think, from Calcano's side of things to do that, which is I'll take care of another Urza's mine. You're at least two turns away from completing the Tron and playing something that's very powerful and scary. And I have a Karn the Great Creator that can bridge the gap right. in the meantime. And that may be good enough. So there's another tower. Sorry. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? 11 mana total with a Karn the Great Creator. So seven, not quite enough for a Cityscape leveler. Would only be destroying the Talisman here. Yeah. It, that, this, this Karn the Great Creator is very good right now, too, though. You know, yeah. ignoring the minus, which is a pretty wild thing right. to say. Just the fact that it does shut down the Talisman and the One Ring. Yeah, it's huge. Very, very powerful right now. It is huge. And this is, I think, what Simon was hoping to dodge. Yep. Yeah. I think uh, Simon might draw a card here in response. No? Well, Christian's expecting him to. Look at him. Ooh. Oh, no draws. Okay. That's, you, you saw how Christian held the die? Yeah. He was expecting him to respond. Right, right. Yeah. And now that means that one ring turn is just, that's nothing. Yeah, he just yeah. didn't do anything. He just missed it. Yeah. Remember, Simon cannot be targeted with Karn Liberated this mm -hmm. turn, as the One Ring was cast. It's very, that's a very, very good point. That's a very good point. So that. if he wants to add some loyalty, we'll have to target himself. Oh, yeah, I forgot to you, you can't Stone Brain either. Mm -hmm. So now there's a Stone Brain. This will, I don't think you this works. Okay, so we missed that part. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Simon, Simon was focused on that, <laughs> and then he missed the one ring activation. So right. there's a lot going on. Yes. So relevant. it was relevant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, because he was trying to use that to stop Simon from playing a Tron land next turn. So this is a wild sequence. <sighs> 
So <laughs> I was thinking, and you were, th we were thinking, okay, Car Liberated can mess things up, right? Right. When the One Ring comes down, protection, you gain protection from everything. Okay, okay. And then the Stone Brain plan, that's out the door for at least a turn. Right. And now Simon, if he was going to complete Tron, he, a draw step would be great. Yeah. And he missed that with the One Ring. Right. And then next turn, you can go Ancient Stirrings, try to find Tron land, then you can play your own Karn. Yes. Suffice to say, there's a lot going on in these games. Gosh, if Simon can find a way to come back from this board state, oh, wow. And you can, you, you can. Ring was never relevant in the matchup until just now. <laughs> yep, you can. You can <laughs> <laughs> the protection was never relevant until now. You and everybody else. That's right. So, Calc is going to search up a Besaju. You know, I think it was like an hour ago, but I remember we came, we sat down, you did your introduction, mm -hmm. and you were like, might be here for a quick one. Don't go That's, anywhere. Uh, um, Don't go anywhere, because this could be quick. I feel like... Uh, I'll turn my colors into a green. I don't think I lied. I thought I was telling well, the truth. Yeah, don't go anywhere, because we have an awesome match here. That, that's true. Right? Wow. Now, you getting protection from everything means that you can't be stone-brained, but... Oh, yes. Well, Sage, you too. Well, he searched that up. Oh, okay. He, he did. searched that he up. Did. Okay. Okay. So, so, still looking... Okay, but remember... He's going to okay. use this. Yeah. Nope. nope. Can't do that either. Yep. Can't do that. That's all right. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. I'm sorry. Long day. It's okay. Long day. Oh, exile. Is it a must? All right. Oh, hold him down. Boy. Oh, man. Boy, I'll tell you. That's, that took a lot out of Christian, I think. It took a lot out of both of them. Uh, it's yeah. been a long week. All right. Simon. Worm coil engine. Only three mana available here. That is <gasps> it! Christian Calcano is going to win this game and match over Simon Nielsen. Three games so to cool. two. The Tron Mirror can be a very short one, or as we just saw, Paul, it can be a marathon affair. Wow, so many things to consider here. You saw that dance with the Poseidus. What can you do? What can I do? You can play a Karn. I can play a Karn. You can have Tron. What can you do if you have Tron? These are all the things that are going through these players' minds. We, of course, have the advantage of being able to see their hands, we sure do. have perfect information, but they don't. And you can see that, Christian, every single turn. That game four was a grind. That game five was a grind. Despite the fact that he was ahead, there were so many things for him to consider. And that's why you saw that at the end, I think he was just relieved that the match was over. Oh, I mean, relieved and exhausted, of right? Course. I mean, there's a lot of decisions going on in those games, folks. And on that last turn, oh, it wasn't beautiful. <laughs> not, I, not the perfect no, turn. No, not the perfect turn by far. But uh, I don't know if you knew this. Magic's a really hard oh, game, yes. even for the best of players. And at the end of the day, Calcano comes out of there alive, he's victorious, and he's on to the finals against who? We don't know. Don't know. We don't know, but we are very excited to find out. But before we get there, we have Will with Christian Calcano, who I think might be a little bit exhausted. Will, take it away. Christian Calcano, you've just come off five exhausting yet thrilling games of magic. Tell me what is going through your head right now. Yeah. My head is just like spinning, you know, <laughs> like all five games were just, I don't know, like I was just making every misplay in the world. Like I had no idea what was going on and I like forgot like what some of the games happened and I'm just, I don't know, I'm just happy. I'm just happy. <laughs> well, you're now in the finals. I need you to tell me, what does that mean to you? We know you've been doing that grind for so long. You're finally here in the finals of a pro tour. Yeah. Tell us how you feel. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like you just uh, you know, you just dream about that stuff. So here we are. Literally living the dream. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. It can be exhausting, it can also be very, very humbling. Christian Calcano is headed on to the finals of Pro Tour Lord of the Rings. His opponent, it's either gonna be Dominic Harvey or Jake Beardsley. We're gonna find out right after this short break.